The foal's appearance isn't the last step in the foaling process. Dr. Karen Wolfsdorf of Haggard Equine Medical Institute is going to tell us about the placenta and things to look for. I'm Erin Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine healthcare. Welcome to the Ryder Report. We're going to examine the placenta. The placenta is a very, very important part in the whole gestation, parturition, live foal process. The placenta is what actually gives the foal uh, the nutrients, the oxygen from the mare. The placenta attaches to the endometrium of the mare and it passes from the nutrients and the oxygen from the blood flow of the mare into the placenta that then goes into the fetus. So if you have any abnormalities in the placenta or at the surface between the endometrium and the placenta, such as in placentitis, what happens is you have a defect in that area and you cannot get the appropriate nutrients or the appropriate oxygen to the fetus. And so it may cause them to not grow appropriately or to become compromised in utero. The placenta needs to come out once the mare foals within three hours. After three hours, we term it a retained placenta. And the placenta comes out usually inside out. And here you can see, this is what a normal placenta will end up usually on the ground. You can see that we have the vasculature here and here, all these white vessels. We have the umbilicus coming down here and then we have the amniotic sac. And the amniotic sac is a thin white sac that actually envelops the fetus and allows the fetus to move around in the amniotic fluid. After the amnion, you will usually have the allantoic fluid and then you will have the uh, chorion allantois, which is what the true name for the placenta is. It's part of a chorionic membrane and an allantoic membrane. And this is part here is the allantoic membrane. It's the shiny white side. And this is the side that's actually closer to the fetus, as opposed to the other side, which is a velvety side that is opposed to the mare's uterus. So if we are actually looking for abnormalities of the, where the placenta attaches to the mare's uterus, this is not the side we want to look at. This side is good to look at abnormalities potentially in the vessels and potentially in the horns. The placenta is broken down into different, different parts like the uterus itself is since it follows the structure of the uterus. And this section here is the cervix where the baby has exited, okay? And this is where the cervix is. You have the body of the uterus and you have one horn and another horn. And a lot of people will just look at this side of the placenta and say, okay, it all looks great. But again, this is not the side that is next to the uterus. So if there is any infection, you are not necessarily going to see it in this side. So what we want to do is once we've looked at this side and we want to look for completeness, Again, both horns and the body. We want to turn this inside out. And the way that we turn it inside out is basically just reaching in there, finding both the horns, and turning it inside out. And again, it's important because this is the side that you have against the mare's uterus. The way we like to lie it out is, as you can see here, hold on a second, let me flip this over, is in an F pattern. Okay, so we have where the foal comes out at the cervix. It's important to look at this area because this is where 
the foal will break through with its feet. And if there is an ascending placentitis or an infection that comes through the cervix, it's going to start right here at the cervical star. And it will cause a loss of this coloration. And you'll usually see a defined line if there is abnormality. When we have infection, this kind of red velvety, which are the villi, will disappear, will be eaten away by the infection. And so you can actually see changes in the surface of the placenta. Now, what you're looking for is a nice, homogeneous, same reddish color with no areas that have no microvilli. The microvilli are the velvety part, and that's where it interdigitates with the mare's endometrium to, uh, to cause an increased surface area for the oxygen and the nutrients to be uh, exchanged. The biggest thing is to make sure that we have the tips of both horns present. And what you can do to identify that is at the very tip of a horn, I don't know if we can see it in that one, the very tip of a horn, you're gonna have an area that is a villus, and that, or that doesn't have an area that's velvety. I don't know if you can see it right there. And that's where the oviduct, or the um, fallopian tube comes into the mare's uterus and therefore we don't have villi there and that's the best way to determine that both horns are present by seeing the tips with that a villus area that doesn't have any villi this placenta is a little old but so important things we lie it in an f shape so that we're able to see the entire placenta with the pregnancy in over here, and we're able to determine that both tips of the horns are present, They're, that the surface is homogeneous in color and in texture, and there doesn't seem to be any type of abnormality. We also will remember, want to remember to flip it over so that we are able to make sure that the whole placenta is nice and same in color. The most important thing to remember is that if a mare has not dropped her placenta within three hours, you need to make sure that you contact your veterinarian to start the appropriate therapy and to make sure that he is able to come out and monitor your mare. And again, just because you have the placenta out, make sure to check it. Because if it's not all there, there's probably still some in the mare's uterus. That's it for this week's Rider Report. Visit thehorse.com for all the latest news on equine healthcare, management, and welfare. I'm Erin Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine healthcare. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.